gives people a flavour of how the criminal justice system works. Say, for example, if I went into school and I gave them a presentation and I said, this is what happens, this is such and such person does this, it doesn't really give them a full understanding or flavour of where they should, how each thing fits into place. Whereas when they've been given a script, they're then given roles. It's almost like acting, but it's acting within the criminal justice system. It makes me want to like, become a lawyer, even more than before. Well, the idea behind uh, the Legal Master Club is really to give kids uh, a real in-depth knowledge of the law, not just teaching from a classroom perspective, but literally a taste and a feel of what it's like to be in the courtroom. So it's given us a good uh, taster of what we might, might be doing when we're older and whether we're interested more to go into it or not. Yeah, I was, I was considering going into this sort of work anyway. I was hoping to go into, po I was hoping to go into politics, which involves a lot of debate in any way, but... Now this has become more of an aspiration for me after this course. But, um, in any case, when I was at school, I never really had an opportunity to do something like this. Um, and what I could say is that if I did have the opportunity to attend court and also see the environment in which the um, legal system actually operates, I think it would um, actually contribute to a great deal in terms of whether I was going to pursue a career in law as well. When I started bar school, I couldn't have asked half of the questions or grasped it as quickly as they did. So they were, I was really impressed at their... The, the way that they were able to pick up the um, information really quickly and just apply it and saw the presentations today, they were really, really amazing. Um, and all that in three days, I think, is amazing. And young people, by coming, becoming involved in this, have a full understanding of how the system works, what the career opportunities are, and the smokescreen almost is, is dissipated. Well, day one we um, started looking at different cases. There was two cases, it was Mercer and Matthews, and we had to like do questions and read the case and make notes on it. Day two we did the Matthews case, we did the same, we did notes, we did um, questions, and then we asked each other them, so we cross-examined everyone. The case was about um, a ring being taken from someone's flat during a party and we was just interviewing people to see um, if they'd seen the ring, who had taken it and why they had taken it. Mercer is charged with two offences, one of theft and one obtaining property by deception. With regards to the theft, the prosecution need to prove that Miss Mercer intended to keep the property indefinitely. Most guests at the party were fuelled by drink, so Miss Mercer put the ring into her pocket for safekeeping when it was carelessly left lying around on the side. I put it in my pocket for safekeeping. It was not my intention to take it home. But didn't you actually take it home, didn't you? Well, I did take it home. I forgot to give it to, okay, um, so share, to, to Deborah at the party. OK, so you're, you said you took the ring home? Yes. If you, what was your reasons for picking up this ring? Well, it, I knew that it was a favourite family heirloom of uh, Deborah Bowman. I knew it was a very expensive ring. And I just basically picked it up and put it in my pocket for safekeeping. So you're saying you know how, um, uh, how important this ring was to Miss Bowman? Yes. And uh, uh, you didn't think to give it to her any sooner? Oh, I had a lot to drink that evening. I completely, it just completely slipped my mind. So have you got any proof that you couldn't remember the um, incident while you had a uh, supposed hangover that there's no proof or whatever? Well, there's no proof to that. I, I, you know, everybody knows. Yeah, everyone was drinking at the party. So, so you're saying the thing that, only thing that stopped you from giving the ring back was this hangover that made you forget everything of that night. That's correct. But surely a hangover can't cause amnesia, which can cause time. No further questions for the bench. Thank, Thank you very much, Mr. Mercer, for your you to go back to the door. Personally, you, the Crown, need to prove beyond reasonable doubt that she committed the said offences. <coughs> Any doubt must be resolved in favour of Miss Mercer. In light of my observation, I would urge you to acquit Miss Mercer. I think it went quite well. Um, it was... Uh, difficult, but I think we may have won. Basically, the case was about um, my defendant, who was accused of attempted burglary. But uh, he obviously said he was not guilty, and he gave us his reasons. And his main reasons were that he had basically nothing to do with it. He went to the bus stop where police approached him and said to him that you've been burgling Hill House, which obviously he rejected. He had a bag of tools with him, which he said had nothing to do with the actual attempted burglary, and it was simply because his friend had given it to him for fixing his bike. I do so only sincerely and truly declare and affirm that the evidence I shall give shall be the truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. Did you know Mr. Matthews before the incident? Uh, yes, I did. Then my dog Billy started barking. Then it went to the window and like I stood up as well. I went to the window but I didn't see anything. 
Then the dog went to the door and I followed it and opened the door for my dog. Then my dog went out, but I couldn't see anything because it was quite dark. Mr. Wainwright Smith, when you exit your property in order to try to find your legit work, what were the conditions like? Why then? Conditions like the visibility. Oh, it was quite dark. Did you have a flashlight with you? No. So you couldn't see clearly? Yes. Um, when was the last time you had your eyes checked, sir? Um, I did yesterday. And how far was you away from the man, from the alleged burglar? Quite a few distance. Quite a distance. So, with the bad conditions and the long distance, it would have been very difficult to identify the burglar? I don't think so. Okay, right. So, how can you be so sure that my defendant is guilty? Um, when I got uh, in the car with the PC and I, and I saw and went for a drive by, I saw the man in an orange jacket, so I felt quite sure it would be the one. So, there are millions of people who are wearing jackets? I don't know. Mr. Smith, the definition of burglary is that you must trespass with the intention to steal or to harm someone. What makes you think that my client has these intentions? On the night, what happened was, I had an argument with my girlfriend, all right, and when I took my jacket off the hook, I, I, was, I was pretty upset. I was coming out the door, and I know it got, it got caught on the handle as I was coming out, but I didn't realise it was actually ripped until later on in, in the afternoon. So one minute you say you don't leave home with ripped clothes and the other minute you say you do. Well, if I knew it was ripped, then... I have then no further questions. Well, as you've heard, uh, as you've seen, we've spent some time discussing the case, and as our learned clerk had explained, we have to be sure that the uh, prosecution have proved their case. In this case, we are not sure, and we are unanimous in the verdict of not guilty. Thank you very much. You're free to go. <laughs> yes. It's been really interesting. I've met some really good people, and uh, the mentors or the facilitators, they've been really helpful, and they've kind of motivated me more to do a career in law. Like before, I was really scared and stuff, and now it's like I feel like I have the confidence to do it. Uh, I rec recommend this to young people because uh, it, it basically helps in decision-making of like job choices and like, future careers and things, because I wasn't sure whether to pursue this as a career, but now uh, it's become more clear to me what I want to do. It's been very, very exciting. Uh, we run a professional outfit of uh, trainers, uh, Synergy Training and Development College, and the um, borough of Barking and Dagenham invited us to uh, impart to the six formers uh, what we call a legal masterclass. As, as Carnegie once observed, you know, give me a man of an average ability and a burning desire, and I will give you a winner in return, always. So we took these kids and we imparted into them the core qualities you need to persuade the court. We taught them in three days, you know, how to manage a case, fact management, um, look at the strengths and weaknesses, you know, of your facts, and you know, of the opponent's facts, and really how to use these facts to persuade the court. Um, the outcome is what we, we saw today. Uh, I've learned how to get the answers properly from uh, a witness quite easily, really. They've been really fun. It's definitely given us an insight into how the legal system works. Because it gives us an opportunity to meet new people as well as learn new stuff as well. I've definitely learned some more stuff than I have actually at school. So, <laughs> yeah, it's good. I've always wanted to pursue a career in law. I've been interested in it since a young age. So when I got the chance of coming to this law master class, obviously I, I wanted to do it definitely. I think it went really well. And now um, I really, really want to be a lawyer. verdict, I would say, over the last three days where the students went from knowing very little about the court procedure, knowing very little about this aspect of the law, I would say very, very successful.